morning. We are back. We are back. We are back. Spark FM Online, number one for urban and Caribbean mu- music. What is music? Is that the right word? It is. Music, it's music according to CK. And <laughs> Noah says music too, right? Music. music. Yeah. I don't know what's wrong with them two little children. Thank you. Um, today we are sitting down with Naya. And Naya is the founder and president of Guided Path Corp, a community-driven nonprofit organization dedicated to assisting Massachusetts underserved youth in foster care through advocacy, raising awareness, providing small luxuries, fostering sibling relationships, and providing housing to keep pregnant teens and their babies together. Oh. That's a lot going on. Wow. <laughs> That's a lot. Yes. Welcome, <laughs> Naya. How Thank are you. you? I'm good. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So I'm very excited about uh, yep. talking up um, to be able to be here and talk about mm. Guided Paths. Yep. So we're a new organization that just started Don't worry about in um, he's not there. 2020. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on here? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. oh, so we can hear you goodly. Um, but go better? ahead. Yes. Okay. So start over. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> so I am, as Danielle said, the president and founder of Guided Paths. I'm a foster mom for the last three years, and through becoming a foster parent, I've learned so much about what's going on. A lot of great things that DCF and other foster agencies do, mm-hmm. and just you, my my passion for becoming a foster parent started as a child. My mom was once a foster parent, and she had a a bad experience and she had a really great one that led to a lifetime relationship with her foster parent Mm -hmm. so I always knew that I wanted to be a foster parent unfortunately I didn't start until later in life because I was under the impression that I needed to have a big house and I need to have the money and the resources and the time and Mm -hmm. all of this stuff to do it which completely turns out to be completely Mm -hmm. inaccurate Mm -hmm. right so after becoming a foster parent I learned of all the supports that are offered to you um, what the state really does provide Provide for these children, yeah. how they take care of them, fostering to adopt is a blessing mm-hmm. because not only do they take care of them um, financially, but they continue even after you adopt okay. and pay for them to go to college. So see, so, really? because so we well yeah. we knew we knew a lot of because um our, um our aunt Undina she is a lifetime foster parent. Mm-hmm. She had. How many kids would you say that she has had well, over her lifetime? I, they, over twenty. To, yeah. yeah, over, over 20. twenty. Well over. Because we sure do have a lot of foster cousins. <laughs> we got that, a lot of cousins from, 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 yeah. from yeah. the point yeah. now. Like, even some of her foster, like they, they are still. Mm. Yep. Yeah, oh, yeah, very prominent in yeah. our lives. We see them, and it's hey cousin, yeah. right, all the time. So, then I knew. I always, I feel like I always knew that they went to college for free, and that something that that's not. That's not, you know, talked about a lot. But you do also get like some type of help with them from the yeah. state or whatever. So it's a very, I wouldn't, it, it's a very, it's not doable. so, it's doable. It's not if like you are completely. You're not, it's not, if you're in it for the money, then don't bother. Right. Mm-hmm. Because there is a lot of that you will have to give back. And if you are a parent like me, who I believe that these children, when they walk in the door, they are my parents, my yeah. kids, right? Yeah. So I give them the same luxuries that my children have had, whether it be a cell phone if you're a teenager or, you know, going on vacation with us and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But not everybody can afford to do that and you're not obligated to do it. Yeah. But that's just me because I've been blessed enough to be able to do do that right yeah. Yeah. but i'm here to raise awareness that if you have a bed and a little bit of patience mm-hmm. and a, a big heart you can be a foster parent mm-hmm. right there are children who are going from house to house every night yeah. sleeping yeah. bags and don't have a forever family or forever home mm-hmm. or just waiting and this these process could take years so what, i think that there's a lot of stigma around it too though because you often like the story that you just said had a bad experience mm-hmm. and then another good how do you get past that bad experience mm-hmm. and knowing that you invited somebody in their home they either violated or something like that happened or wasn't good experience i know everything is not a one fit shot but like how do you open yourself up to be able to before you become a foster parent you get a lot of training right? okay good. and the training is just book but your real training yeah. <laughs> is just starts when you actually start doing it mm-hmm. and you have to be honest with yourself understand what age group that you think that you want. That's how it starts. Mm -hmm. Once you start getting them, that changes a little bit, right? So I will start, but it's like, I had a, I didn't want teenagers. I only wanted toddlers. I didn't want to be woken up in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want newborns. I didn't want anyone who was substance (laughs) abused. I didn't want all of those things, right? So I started off and I got a, 
two year old, twenty four month old. You, okay, you can. It sounds really horrible. I know, but you can, <laughs> but yeah. you can say I only want girls, I only want boys, and some people do it because of the space they have. Yeah, mm-hmm. sharing rooms with their kids, and other people are like I just connect better, yeah. right? And they want you to pick because mm-hmm. they want it to be a fit for you oh, and the child. Oh, makes sense. Yeah. So it's not really a bad thing. But I had a teenager who didn't work out, mm-hmm. and I was like, okay, I had him for a couple of months, and I was like, this is just not for me. Yeah. Didn't want any more teenagers at all. Yeah. But last September, I ended up with a teenage girl who had um she had been in different home not home centers okay. for quite a while hasn't been with the family in a long time and i opened my doors to her mm-hmm. and this has been an amazing experience really? mm-hmm. yeah so there is a lot of um you kind of just have to be resilient mm-hmm. you don't you have to be courageous because you don't know what you're going to get yeah. yeah but you also have to be honest and say this is for me or this is not for me yeah. i'm sorry we're not a fit yeah. and it's better for you to do that for the children because i had a lot of anxiety about that i'm like i don't want to now have this child feel not wanted again yeah. or yeah. do yeah. that but it really wasn't healthy to have a child around that we just wasn't making it yeah. so i said you know what this is this is not the best fit and i believe you will have a best fit mm-hmm. we had a lady come in here before remember mm-hmm. and she was telling us about well, the same thing that you're doing raising awareness and i think it's such mm-hmm. an important mm-hmm. conversation and a, a, a such an important cause yes um because she was talking mostly about the fact that you know, like foster caring is hard in general, mm-hmm. but especially for black and brown kids who yeah. seem to not be able to get placement. Right. They're usually in group homes and they have they have different issues because mm-hmm. they were raised like yeah. a lot of these kids have been through more in a couple of years than a lot of us adults have been through in our lives. Yes. And I think that that is something else that scares people. But at the same time, we have to think about how black and brown people are often disadvantaged, even in disadvantaged situations. Right. Absolutely. You know, so like yeah. that sucks. And yeah. you hit the nail on the head when you said that, right? Mm-hmm. Because it is hard. And yeah. it is, it's hard because, like, you know, they've been through so much more than we have. And there's a thing called ACES, right? Mm-hmm. I can't remember exactly what it means right now, but long story short, short it talks about the this like the trauma that children go through yeah and most foster children come into the system with at least three or four aces whether and those aces can include abandonment just mm. separation from a parent mm. all of those things so the goal of foster homes should be to reduce those aces mm-hmm. and unfortunately and again i don't blame the city or the state it's just because of the dynamics not having enough foster parents, enough resources, these foster, some foster children will reduce by now five-year-old yeah. who are in the last stages of adopting, and some will increase yeah. because when, as a foster parent, if I go on vacation and I can't afford to take the children or don't want to take them, I just need a break yes. which is <laughs> within my right, mm-hmm. um, I send them, I tell them I need placement for them for the week mm. these children are picked up and they're taken to another home mm. another foster oh, home wow. so now they're ex- they have anxiety about is my coming come back, back? To yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. or you know are the, is this just the nice way of getting rid of me mm. or what are these people going to do to me how do they do things you know the current foster parent has learned that i like this and i don't like that mm. and they have to go through that so oh. then the, the aces goes back up right yeah. so the reason for guided paths is to work within the systems and the restraints that we have mm-hmm. but to reduce those aces oh. so there's two missions to my organization the first being the advocacy and also bringing foster children together we have a lot of communities out there right we have communities for black and brown people mm-hmm. we have the lgbt i'm um, bt sorry um, we have all of these other communities but where is the one for foster children yeah. they live in shame they go to school they don't want people to know they're foster children oh. they don't because they are afraid they up until this year, they couldn't do sleepovers. Now yeah. they have losing <laughs> that and they can do sleepovers, mm-hmm. but they're afraid to talk about or let kids get close to them mm-hmm. because they feel ashamed for mm-hmm. their parents. Right. You know, when I was growing up, my mom smoked cigarettes. Mm-hmm. And when I would go to my grandmother who didn't smoke cigarettes, I would smell like cigarettes and I would yeah. be embarrassed mm-hmm. because of what was happening at home. And that was a small thing. Yeah. So imagine going to school as a child and being embarrassed because you don't live with your mom. Yeah. You don't live with your siblings. Mm. You don't have the same rights. You can't just bring kids home. Mm. You can't do all of these things, right? So Guided Pass would like to work with the city to continue to reduce those ACEs and to bring children together in their own community so that they can remove being insecure mm. at school. One thing you did say, it's written in your bio, is that you help to keep siblings together. Yes, yeah. right. Um, and that's that's 
connected. So that is something that yeah. I think is super yes. important mm-hmm. and also traumatizing. I'm thinking yeah. everybody knows how close me and my yeah. sister are. So if we were younger and something you know, happened to our parents yeah. and they split us up, like, what do you do? Like, yeah. what are we supposed to do? Yeah. That's the only person yeah. I know. You turn into a yeah. disgruntled adult. Yep. That's what <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. And literally, my, my, like yeah. I said, my mom went to foster when she was 15, but she was the third of 10 children. Oh, wow. So oh, I yeah. actually, in my 20s, found her two younger siblings oh. who were separated, had no contact. Wow. The other ones kind of were in, like, they ended up in foster homes that were kind of connected. Like, two sisters. Yeah. My mom's was a little bit different, but she knew where they were. Mm-hmm. But these other two were adopted and oh. they were in different families wow. and I found them through ancestry wow oh. so I'm an advocate of if you have family out to find them mm-hmm. they were so overjoyed to just know to find people who look like them mm-hmm. to connect with them right, right? where yeah. they come from so part of our mission like I said is like you know, you can't always take all three children mm-hmm. yeah. when I got one of my I already had two and I was like I can't take all three yes <laughs> but i want to know where, where they're are. at yeah. so that that way i could get them together i've taken them to six flags mm-hmm. and done little bowling trips and done little stuff like that mm-hmm. to make sure that they stay together mm-hmm. this summer the three of them are going to go to a camp together oh. for a week you yeah. know so there is and that had nothing to do with me that was part of the system mm-hmm. but those are things i advocate for yeah. Yeah. right yeah so those are that's the whole big one half of the mission mm-hmm. the other part of our mission is to get a property where we can open a home that will house teenagers who are pregnant who are in foster care. Which is another... Oh, like, I knew nothing about it. <laughs> levels oh, on top yeah. of levels and top of yeah. levels of trauma. It is because what happens is you just want to think, I was a teen mom. I got pregnant when I was 17, had my son when I was 18, had another one at 21, you know, and I was a teen mom, yeah. right? I still went to college, I graduated high school, I did all of that stuff, but it wasn't easy. Mm-hmm. But can you imagine... Being in foster care, getting pregnant, you already have all these aces on yeah. top of mm-hmm. you, right? And then you're pregnant and you don't know what's going to happen with you or your baby. Oh, right? yeah. Right. You don't know if they're going to take it. Because yeah. you're in foster care. Who's going to want you with a baby? Mm-hmm. And you know what I mean? Oh. Like, you're, yeah. you're thinking oh. that. That's yeah. what you're thinking. Oh. Right. Because people usually want one. They either want little kids or yeah. they want yeah. big kids. Yeah. Right? And if they want big kids, they don't want big kids with a baby. With a baby. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You already got a red flag. Yeah. So my situation that did happen and shortly after I got someone, turned out that she was having a baby, right? Oh. And so I had a choice, like, I can't do this. Mm. And then what happens? So then they're usually placed in a, a program mm-hmm. uh, where, the, like, they end up staying while they're pregnant. And then once they're born, trying to find placement for them and the baby together, and that which is crazy. a small miracle to happen. <laughs> yeah. And if that doesn't happen, the baby gets put into custody. Right. Oh, no. Um, right. Yeah, and so the goal is always reunification Mm -hmm. with um, the foster system, but it's also permanency for the child. Mm -hmm. So if you're 15, 14, 15, 16, and you have a baby, Mm -hmm. and their baby is now placed in custody, by the time you're 18, it can start fighting for your child or asking for your child. Maybe adopted. adopted. And in order to get your child, you need to have housing, you have to show that you can take care of it, you have to have all these things. So the only hope that they have is by if they can get placed together Mm -hmm. and it's not that the system doesn't want that it's Mm -hmm. just that the resources and the people out there who are willing to take that it's it's a lot so you know you can't judge anybody who can't do it or don't want to do it Mm -hmm. but there's definitely a need for more system more places like what i'm trying to open i'm trying to open a place where they can feel at home they can have their children, they can stay with them, get the parenting skills that they need, get the resources that they need, need and that. also serve as a place, a community place, mm-hmm. where children in foster care could have birthday parties. How, how, how close are you to getting this? I know it's, it's, it needs to build and you need to get all yeah. of the resources and funding, but like, when is your timeline of trying to have this something like this going? Yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I so you, yeah. I started some of the small things. Right now yeah. we're in a fundraising phase. Yeah. The long part is, you know, so I was able to get my tax exemption and all that stuff. Oh, but good. Congratulations. It was at the private fo- foundation. Thank you. So yeah. we need, we're waiting to get the certification from the public. Oh. So then I have a grant writer who's looking to write grants mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Uh, but we're trying to raise awareness, get our name out there and do the other things that we can do now, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So in fundraising, some of the things that we are doing, we had a, a program this year where people could nominate children who 
are have unusual um, circumstances at home, but still are persevering. Oh, good. And they can yeah. write a letter and nominate them, and we would give scholarship money. Oh, good. Just like a little stipend to yeah. them to recognize you were trying despite your situation. Mm -hmm. And they just need to be in school, um, didn't have to have perfect attendance, or everyone gives something to honor roll students, right? Yeah. But to try. Because I was one of them non-honor roll. Yeah. Yeah. I made it, damn it. Right. <laughs> I got exactly. my little B's and C's happily. And God it didn't it. mean you weren't trying. Yeah. You were trying. I was, was trying. Yeah, everyone's yeah. level of trying is different, especially yeah. if you're creative, right? Yeah. The sitting down at the book, you may be highly intelligent, but sitting at school all day is not. Like, look at the wind you. blowing. Yeah. Ah, I gotta read a book. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> right. So, we're trying to do stuff like that in the community. We have had some skating events, mm. and we have some things coming up. We are you working on partnerships. Skating, bowlings, and things well, like that. So stuff like that. But we think, you know, one of the things, I've created partnerships within the community. So I just established a partnership with the y Old Colony YMCA mm -hmm. and Stow Inn, which they have been more than gracious of allowing us to use their facilities and, right. um, you know, backing us and sending out the information to their sponsors. And then also I've gained a partnership with Sifted Cakes, who are your, oh, co your yes. cousins. Yes. Renowned um, Baker, who mm -hmm. has done so many different things we're gonna do a donut uh, making thing on November 4th at the Y that, yeah. yeah so we'll have more information on that we have um, another vendor who is going to volunteer to do teach it's how to apply makeup. Yes. Oh, no. I, yeah. I'm going to be on be that there. one. Yeah. Yes. yeah. <laughs> I'm a volunteer. Chaperone yeah. that one. <laughs> we have um, five strong candles who's upstairs. Mm -hmm. They're going to do a candle making class. Oh, oh. So, oh. yeah, we have a lot of stuff coming up. And we're just trying to work with the community. You know, their opportunity, too, because we are nonprofit. Mm -hmm. So it works both ways, yeah. right? And just to do things to bring kids in to meet other children. It's not just for foster children. It's yeah. for the whole community. But foster children and families families will always have like a discounted rate oh, good. Um, for stuff like that. So we just really want to bring everybody together. I think that it's amazing. I think that your idea and your goals are amazing. Mm -hmm. And um, I value these conversations just to even get people thinking about yes. yeah. fostering. Because I know a lot of people got a little extra room yeah. and all kind of stuff. That's what yeah. I wanted to ask. Like, what, what? is the, what is the minimum requirements? 1,300 square feet. Okay. Uh, what is it? 1,300 or 13? So it's like an extra feet. bedroom. 13, yeah. uh, extra bedroom or extra bed. Okay. Yeah. If you have a child, you have a two bedroom and you have a bunk bed, yeah. that's good. Okay. So as long as the child would have to be the same sex as your child, mm -hmm. you know, that's fine. Yeah. So yeah. you don't need a lot. Mm -hmm. And then you're worried about, oh, what about a doctor's appointment? This, Technically, DCF will take them. The social worker will oh. come to doctor's appointments. Yeah. Oh. They will find, you get babysitting every month, paid babysitting. You get respite um, so many weeks per year. Oh. There's so many different things you get into. Like they have foster family days. You get a free membership with the YMCA. Oh girl, so, I'm to get me a foster child. Like I've always thought like if yeah. I would, if I had time to yeah. sit down because I'm just never, I'm just never around. Yeah. And I know that my child is often with his mother or his, my mother yeah. or his father. I, if I had, like, maybe when I get to settle down, yeah. I uh -huh. definitely have considered it a lot, and I would like to do that. Okay. Um, because I do, you know, like, there, my son sleeps with me, so he needs to move into his own room, but we yeah. can get a bunk bed in there. Yeah. And he want a brother, and I'm not going to give him one, so he should get one. Yeah. Somehow. <laughs> he want a brother in the house. He <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I mean, I I think we've we've also, you know, like, as, as Danielle mentioned, we've also had that great example from our aunt who really, yeah. really, those kids were her kids at the time, and they were on in Disney World every year oh, yeah. and, and all of that. So we have that example. And so it's, you know, like, it's, it's always been something, but, you know, we all have our, our struggles or whatever. But now, you know, in my old age. <laughs> my yeah. old age. Now that I've settled down a little. I mean, I would love to, to you know, to help a child out because we hear these stories about these kids who are just so lost. Yeah. And I've experienced adults who have been through the whole foster care system and have become yeah. disgruntled adults. So, you know, if, if I could have a uh, place in helping someone to have a better path, yeah. that would be awesome. A guided path. Yeah, yeah I like to see what you did there. Yeah, yeah. If you don't want to do foster care, you don't have the capacity yeah. or the time, mm -hmm. there's other things you could do. There's hotline programs yeah. Yeah. where they remove children in the middle of the night and you say, well, they can you can bring them oh, here yeah, the until yeah. the morning, right? Yeah. You can do the respite or just the babysitting. I'll keep it for this week. Or I'll keep it from that week. Oh. And it's taught my own children a lot. They're yeah. older, mm -hmm. but just seeing the different situation that kids come from, yeah. It's a really different appreciation of what luxuries they had. Because yeah. you know we all mess up at least one. Kid, Absolutely, right? yeah. So I probably messed up all three. But they realize <laughs> yeah. that they're not that bad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so they they recognize their they privilege. Recognize, yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah. So so guided path. 
Uh, where yes. do we find um, more information? Where can we follow you? What? Uh, yeah, tell us how we can find out more and how we can donate, whatever we got to do. Sure. So right on our website, guidedpathonline.org. We usually keep our events up to date. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a place where you can donate. You can get tickets for stuff. You can find out things. I am working on changing the website, but you will be redirected once it's done mm -hmm. so that there will be more. We're going to do a blog. There'll be more videos, meeting our board and stuff like that. So, you know, to get off the ground, because I was very anxious to get this going yeah mm -hmm. you start where you can where you're at right yep. and then you kind of grow as you go along i love it yes yeah, so this is what we're doing and we're just a very simple company that's looking to do amazing things for children um and really it's just to give back to the community 100 percent as much as we can i yeah. think this is amazing so you guys have a couple of things august 10th of the silent online auction? Yes, that's coming up. So oh, we have a couple things. We've gotten some donations from the Red Sox and from the Patriots, signed um, pictures that will be that will be auctioned, I mean, yes, auctioning off, mm -hmm. and also some luxury vacations that people can bid on oh, as yes. well. So there will be more information by tomorrow that okay. will be on our website about that and the link where you can register and sign on. So everything will have a starting rate, starting bid, and then it will go from there, and 100% of the proceeds will go back to the organization. Absolutely. And then don't forget, August 19th, they're doing a shopping trip to American Dream Mall and the Mills Outlet. I love them kind of trips. <laughs> I love them. Just give me my little money, get me on my little bus, and let me go on, on my I like way. And I like that American Dream Mall. That is nice. Yeah, <laughs> actually, I, I, I added City on right to We're going to do Ooh. the um, yeah. outlets uh -huh. as well. So that is, we haven't gotten a lot of traction on that, um, so we may be revisiting it. So, but I'm out there for another couple of days, mm -hmm. and if it doesn't pick up, I'd rather, you know, do it when it's going to be more successful. Right, That's absolutely. what I'm about. I'm not afraid of failure. Yeah, I'm afraid of not trying, yeah. right? That part. So, yeah. yeah. So, do you, you have know, a so flyer for it? I, there... Not yet, but not send online. it to us. Yes, yeah, I do have it online, and I'll put it up for you. I do have a couple flyers. Absolutely. So, this is this is amazing. I really you. do appreciate you continuing this conversation thank you. and bringing it up. Yeah. Um, whatever you need, obviously, you know we're here. Yes. Send us things. We'll post it online so people can know about it. And people, this is just a, a, another just kind of reminder to you guys that if you can do something, uh, there's lots of ways that you can help the community in so many different ways, mm -hmm. especially these kids. And if you do need more information, reach out to Naya. She yes. will help you out help you the system um, and through the situations. And then from there, you could just be, you know, somebody's little superhero. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, that's nice. That's I right. like that. Naya, thank you so much for joining us today. I know we kept you over a little bit over the time, but this is important. So we'll definitely have you back um, you. around I'd the time where, yeah. you know, we're doing that big thing. Yeah. Next year. So <laughs> save the date. Yeah. June um, 2nd, 2024, will be a big uh, expo at UMass Boston. Mm -hmm. And we're looking especially for um, youth who have our entrepreneurs who mm -hmm. want to set up tables yep. and vendors and performers. So more to come on that. Absolutely. Thank and you then for having me. Shopping trip August 19th. <laughs> we outside. Yeah. Um, follow. We posted the link in the comment section. If you guys want to learn more, go ahead and click on that link. Sign up. Ask for more help. And Naya, we are going to take some pictures and stuff right now. Yes. Thank yes. you. We're going to go to a quick commercial break. We'll be right back in a few moments. Keep it locked to Spark FM Online, number one for urban and Caribbean music.